Hello everyone and welcome to how to make a rocket engine in Blender by request of somebody in the comments. I will show you how to make one. It's not that hard. It's actually one of the easier things that you could model in Blender because it ultimately is a cylinder. Uh, well, at least mostly. Uh, so we can add a cylinder. I've deleted the default cube. This is Blender 2.8. I already started out and decided to re-record, so I've got the right dimensions for what I wanted. I estimate that the rocket engine that I want is going to be a meter in diameter, so half a meter in radius. And sometimes this window will be shrunk like this, so it'll look like that, so you have to expand it. I've gone with 36 vertices. As, uh, the default is 32. I prefer 36 because it is 10 degrees uh, per vertex and then so per gap and then I've got a depth of two uh, cap fill type is actually this end part uh, so you can fill it like an end gon this so there's a 36 sided figure or you can use triangles um, I am going with the end gon for this one it's not going to show up too badly uh, so here we have uh, ridges along everything because of the polygons uh, to deal with that, just shade smooth, and we're going to right away add an edge splitter. Uh, so now it looks smooth, even though it's a very limited number of uh, vertices. So that's a nice little uh, cylinder for us. And you could drag in reference images. So I have some placed here, but um, th really I don't have isometric views of this particular engine, and I'm not going to go into very great detail on it. So um, basically, I don't have uh, sorry, orth orthographic views of the engine. This one is pretty close, but I'm just uh, throwing them in just for you to be able to see what the engine looks like. That's what we're going for. I'll be looking at an example of it elsewhere, so I'm going to have my reference images separate, not inside the thing. But you could put it, uh, so pressing keypad uh, or number pad 5 gets you into orthographic view. And then pressing numpad 1 uh, gets you in the front view. You can see front orthographic. And the blue axis is up down. So keep that in mind. So that's up down. And then uh, numpad 3 is the right view. And numpad 7 is the top view. If you want to go to the bottom view or any of the reverse views, you press 9. So here's the bottom view. And if I press 9 again, it'll go to the top view. Or if I start in the front view, pressing uh, keypad 9 will get into the back view. And so once in this view, if you uh, want to, you can just drag and drop your image. So let me just drag and drop another one. And uh, you could size it properly if you want. So we can just size it there and then move it to where it needs to be, for instance. This is just an example. Again, I'm not going to use it like this. And then you could use that as a backdrop for modeling. You probably want to push it to the back there. Once in orthographic view, it doesn't matter if you push it further back. It's not, there's no perspective. So it'll work out just fine. So you can have your reference Im images like that. And you could put uh, front view, side view, and top view. If you have them, it depends on whether you have them for your model. But I'm not going to bother with having those there because those aren't in orthographic view anyway. Um, if you go to blueprints.net and you're modeling, I don't think you're going to get a rocket engine there, but if you're modeling something else, you might have a chance of finding something with a triple view and you could split it apart in an image editing, editing program and then put them in. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this uh, end gone here. This is the bottom of the of the engine. So I've I, I pressed um, three to go. Oh, sorry, tab to change from object mode to edit mode. Uh, three to go into face select mode. So one is vertex mode. So then you can pick up the, ver the vertex. Two is edge mode. So you can pick an edge, a two dimensional thing. And three is to select the three dimensional thing, which is well, no, it's actually a two dimensional thing. Sorry. One is a zero-dimensional thing, which is a vertex. Two is a one-dimensional thing, which is an edge. And then three is a two-dimensional thing, which is a face. There we go. Okay, so we still have one of those up there, but now we're sort of empty. And the important thing to note about uh, modeling these things is we have normals. 
And so the right now the faces are only going to appear when you're looking at them from this side, the direction that these normals are pointed. So again, you can go up here and see which direction the normals are pointing because you'll only see that face from that side. In here, we don't see the normals. That means it's going to be invisible on this side. Now that's going to be a problem. If you look in the engine, it's going to be suddenly invisible. So we're going to add another modifier, solidify. Okay, and solidify, you're going to decide what thickness you want for the engine. I'm just going to keep it to one centimeter. And uh, that should be visible enough. And I'm going to move it above the edge split so that the cylinder will look proper. And then if we apply this, I'm going to unapply it soon. But let's say we, um, first of all, to get uh, to apply it, we have to get into object mode. So press tab again. And then if we apply and then we uh, tab again, now we see that we have normals on the inside as well, and also right on the edge here too. So now it's going to have, it's gonna be visible both on the inside and on the outside. Now, you might not want some parts to be visible on the inside because that's going to be extra polygons. So you might want to do the solidify for just a portion of it, like the end part of the nozzle instead of the whole thing. For now, I'm, I'm not going to solidify it yet. So I've undone the solidify. I do control Z to do undo. And so I'm going to leave it like this. And so when we work with it, we've only got these outside polygons, but eventually we're going to get the inside ones as a bonus later. So now we're going to make the nozzle. And uh, well, we're actually going to shrink the top bit to make the nozzle, if you will. And I'm going to take a good look at my reference images. And what I see is, and I, uh, one, uh, it's, it's tough because we don't have exact dimensions, but I will literally put a ruler up to the screen to try and figure out what the proportion of the empire, because I don't have the nozzle ratio of the engine. And if, even if you had the nozzle ratio, which is the ratio between the throat, which is the tight bit and the end bit, the end of the nozzle at the bottom here, even if you have that number, that can be deceptive because all of these engines have cooling all over them. So the, noz the nozzle ratio is only the inside. And so if it has a lot of cooling jackets and stuff around it, you're not going to get the right ratio anyway. So I'm taking a look at that and pulling out a ruler on one of the images that's flattest. And I'm trying to get a sense of what the ratio is. I think the end of it is a little bit more than three times the center part. So what we're going to do is stick in orthographic view. This is loop cut and you can see the shortcuts there, but I usually just click that and I'm going to click a loop cut here and estimating a little bit. I'm going to, I'm seriously just eyeballing this one. And that's where I think the throat is. So, and then we can go from there actually. So that will be good. And I want to have a chamber that's about here. And you can do it more precisely if you want. Okay, so this is gonna be our throat. So I'm gonna, I'm on edge select mode by pressing two. I'm gonna hold down alt and I'm gonna click this to select that ring. So alt will select a ring like that. A collection of edges or it could also be a collection of um, faces if they're all in a ring so if I'm in face select mode that will select all of those so two and then uh, click that to select that I'm gonna press S and that's for scaling and I'm gonna scale down to 30% so 0.3 and that's what I believe uh, the ratio is between the throat and the end point, but it might be a, the image I'm using might be a little bit deceptive. So I'll have to double check that later on. So then we've got these two edges. So if I want to select both edges, I'm going to hold shift and hold alt and then click. And then I'm going to press S and I'm going to size that by 0.5. Now that this part went up a little bit more than I wanted. Now that doesn't look totally right to me. So based on the images that I'm looking at, so I'm going to size this a little bit lower. 
and I'm gonna size these also a little bit lower. Oops, have S.8. Okay, and I'm gonna bring this down again. And I'm just tugging on this blue one to bring it down. It's actually a pretty long thing. I think I actually need to move this up further. Okay, so we've got this sort of deal. And then I'm gonna add another loop cut here. And I'm gonna press S and just pull on it to size it out. Press S, uh, sorry, loop cut and press S to pull on it. Cut, press S. Uh, trying to get the slope that they have on the real engine right. And then anytime we can go ahead and alt click and adjust. And I'm pressing S to adjust it. And I'm just adding more to give it more definition. And adjusting those. I'll add one here too. Now this uh, this uh, throat is actually pretty supposed to be pretty smooth. So we we want a few more cuts right here. Uh, I don't like how that's going. We're gonna turn off the um, the normals. I think I made my point. We don't need those up. That's still pretty sharp. It's very smooth in the image. So uh, the thing is with the edge split, we're at 30 degrees. And you can see that it's sharp here. But if we increase this uh, from 30 to like 85, it'll keep that smooth. But that doesn't look quite right. Um, so we'll keep it 45 and just increase the size there. And we could, uh, there, a lot of uh, modeling stuff includes subdivision surface, which would really smooth things out. You can see the penalty for that is you're going to have a whole lot more um, vertices and faces and all that business. So if you can afford that in what you're doing, then go for the subdivision surface. That'll be fine. And you can see this, that very much smooths this out much more and we and i think i could probably afford it but let's say uh, here we're doing it after the edge split which is probably a good idea if we uh just go ahead and apply these we can get a sense of how many polygons we have right now uh so uh 3960 faces uh, 4,000 vertices and it's not, uh, close to 8,000 triangles. There's a limit for uh, Kerbal and Unity. A single mesh can only have, I think it's um, 32,000. I forget of which, but uh, you can break things up into more than one mesh though. Uh, so we could separate off the nozzle and make it its own mesh, especially if we wanted it to have a different material. If it had a different color, then we would probably do that. But it's probably not that important for this engine because the engine is entirely metallic. It doesn't seem to have different materials going on. And so I probably won't do that. Okay, uh, but in, uh, you see that it's sort of rounded this whole thing because it's taking the average of the vertice locations and sort of curving over it. So if you don't want it to do so much curve on that part because that's the main chamber and it's supposed to be fully cylindrical you can add another edge here and edge here and then we see that it's just uh, curving that part otherwise the effect is pretty good overall okay now there's a lot of pipes <laughs> uh, to say the least so we've got this face here I think this should be even taller and I think yeah, um, there are two kinds. There are ones with edges and one without. Let's start one without. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a torus. And that torus is going to go right. Oh, no, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Down. And I think this one's too thick. 
compared to the image. And again, you could type KRE-075 to find the engine, but this torus is very thick compared to the pipe that I want. So uh, we're going to reduce the minor radius here to 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.15, sorry. And we can smooth this, by the way. That can be done immediately. Uh, Mm, it's still too thick. Point 0.1. So especially around the nozzle, you'll see these kinds. And then sometimes around the throat, you'll see them. And there'll be a pipe going to it. But then there's also uh, braces and tubes around the chamber. And what we want to do is, I'm just going to extrude them. So there seems to be one that's actually down here-ish. And this is going to be the toughest one because it's at, uh, there's a sort of slope there. And I don't want to select this uh, circle. I want to select this one, you see. So I just click this edge. If I wanted to select this one, I'd select this edge. So I'm holding down Alt to select the, the circle. But depending on which edge you click closer to, it'll select that one. Pressing E for extrude, but then immediately left clicking to confirm that I'm extruding, but I didn't want to actually pull it out yet. And then pressing S to actually resize. So now it's bigger, but I want to select the top edge so pressing 2 to switch modes from the face to edge and we are going to press s to scale down and uh, so we have we have a little ring there so there there are always these little rings around the engines like this there's another one and there are easier ways of doing this Oh, there are harder ways of doing this too. There's uh, one here, and then there's two more closer to the top of the chamber. So there's one here-ish. You can be picky and uh, make sure that your rings are the same width. I'm doing it very simply. So here we have a set of three, and we can do these three all at once. Press three to select face select mode, alt, holding down alt and then clicking on this to get that loop and then holding down shift to select another loop hold on uh, it just another program decided to do that shift alt click shift alt click and then we selected all three and then press e again left click to confirm the extruding but don't extrude it yet and then press s to pull it out now this doesn't work very well here because it's sort of e it's sort of averaged uh, between uh, see uh, a loop that happened to be right in the middle would have ended up right but this one has ended up tilting up and this one has ended tilting down so there, there's a whole pivot point discussion that uh, where the heck am I pivot? Uh, here uh, individual origins hold on let's see. Uh, that might help yeah okay so yeah individual origins seems to do the trick I want them a little bit smaller and so instead of uh, what it was at was median point and so is taking the median point of all three rings uh, and that's why the upper one got tilted up and the lower one got tilted down um, the individual origins allows you to do it so that they're all relative to their individual faces. Okay, so now we have some extra rings. And this is what the engine looks like right now. We could make those more prominent. Uh, it depends. Now, looking at the images of pretty much any engine, you're going to have this mess of tubing. And it's up to you how many tubes you want to add, but uh, certainly you want to get the main uh, turbine gas generator and the gas generator exhaust and uh, that whole bit but and that's usually off to the side it's some 
it's close to the diameter of the chamber. It might be a little bit less. And we're going to go ahead and add a new mesh cylinder. And uh, it's just S to scale it. And but it'll be very hard to see the details of it because it's going to be a god-awful mess unless you're really lucky. And there are ways of making tubes. Okay, I guess I guess we're going to go into the talk about how to make tubes because there's going to be tubes between this uh, tentative uh, gas generator and also the chamber. So what we're going to do is uh, there's the way that I do it and there's the way you can do it. The way I do it is using a plugin that I paid for, uh, and that simplifies things. But I'll show you what the plugin actually does, because anything that a plugin can do, uh, Blender can do natively already. And so we've got these Bezier curves. And a Bezier curve is a curve that you can manipulate. So it's just a one-dimensional thing. Press tab, and then you've got these handles. And so this is the location of one of the edges. And so let's say we want a pipe going from here. Uh, and then this one is the other end. So let's just make it, let, let's say it's going to uh, there, all right. And actually let's have an intermediate point. So let's say it's, uh, we, we're gonna have the pipe go out, come here, and then we want the pipe to go in again. So it'll be sort of flattish over here. And then we want another point to control it. And we want it all in line. And then we want E to extrude, which will create a new control point, And we'll put that there. OK, but now it's going in this really weird circle. That's not good. So that's what the other two handle points are. So while after we selected the first one, oh, uh, maybe. Medium point? Ah, okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> individual, individual origins is not helpful in this case. Okay, so we're going to pull this over here and maybe move it in a little bit. You're going to have to practice with these. And we're going to sort of bring this in. Oops. And pull this side there. Okay, and then this point, we're going to need to worry about its handlebars. So pull that in, pull that in. So this is how you control the curve. Moving these around. And I think I want to move that out a little bit more. And then this this one also. We need to move this, oops, click that, click that, move in. So this is just the sort of track of the pipe that we're going to make. Now there's other ways of making pipes, okay? This is just probably, and I'll show you one other way. Um, that we can pull in. But you can see this is a track of the pipe. We can see it's going like this and going like that. Okay, so that's pretty good, but we need the whole pipe part of it. So we need another curve, add, and it's gonna be a circle. So we're going to just make a little circle there and we can adjust it after the fact. So that's a circle, and I'm going to click this curve, and I'm going to go to this green one that says Object Data Properties. And we're going to go to Geometry, Bevel, Object, Bezier Circle. And voila, that becomes the diameter of the pipe. And we can see that there's a little bit of a problem, but first let's resize our diameter. And we do that by clicking with that circle still and pressing S and scaling down. Okay. And then over here, we can still manipulate our pipe, uh, pipe by pressing tab. And we can uh, sort of move that, but that's probably not a big problem. We could get it in there. And then move that and it looks like it's sort of slanted so we want to pull this around like that and you're gonna have to fill around with it this isn't where our pipe really is right now i'm just using this as a demonstration so but you get the idea there you have made a pipe 
and the pipe is good. Uh, well, I don't quite like this bit, so we can pull that out, make it a little bit more of a handlebar thing. Okay, and then after you've got it the way you want it, make sure you do have it the way you want it. You go object, convert to mesh. And then now it is a mesh. And oftentimes I'll also set origin to the center of mass so that its origin is close to itself. And then when we press tab, we see that we've got all these uh, faces. And it's a good number of faces. Though this isn't quite meeting up with that, but we can still fix that. Press 2, holding down Alt, select the ring. It's an open end. Okay, it'll make an open end. And so there we have our mesh, and we can make another one. We can keep that curve and create a whole bunch of pipes like this. Uh, but so I have a plugin called Fluent that if I press F, uh, has plate pipe wire. The pipe doesn't always work great. The wire sort of works wonderful. So place the first point, click here, and place the last point, click there, and then suddenly have a wire. <laughs> and so, uh, and then uh, the fly menu, uh, root strength, you can see I can shift like that. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you remember how we created the intermediate point? It only has two control points, uh, whereas this pipe has three, so it has a little bit of a benefit. Uh, you can easily change the curve resolution. Right now it's got 64 segments. I, that's too many. I would like 24 usually. And uh, we can add a ring. Oop, there's, so there's a ring. And then we can uh, uh, probably change the length is misspelled, but thickness. So see, we can add a little ring there. And all this is doing is it's a little, I, I don't want to say macro, but it's some way of um, speeding up the process of all the things that you could do anyway. And so we could go back to curve and then the curve uh, coil. Oh, that doesn't work very well. Um, let's see, radius. Uh, you can see what it's sort of tried to do. It's like one of those telephone wires. Uh, curve resolution. Um, I don't, I obviously don't use this much. Uh, <laughs> this one, this, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's done anything good. Okay, let's control Z to undo. So you got the picture there, but it's only, it's just meant to make things work a little bit faster. So I'm gonna deviate a bit from the actual engine plan uh, just to show you the stuff. I re the when I I'm gonna model the engine properly, but uh, that's gonna take time and it's a just a lot of staring at things and referring to the reference image and seeing if I got it right. And we don't need to do that. Uh, actually, I'm gonna undo say because uh, this pipe I didn't really want as a mesh yet. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna want to reposition that and so I'll keep it as this so that I can I can just move it about right uh, so I'll adjust it based on other stuff and you don't need to make it again actually uh, object mode shift D and suddenly we've got another one and so if you want to you can oops. let's say you need one oh that's not where I want it to go one on the other side Actually, one on the other side, you can use a different method, but let's say that it needs to be lower, for, in, for instance. And we can move that there. And here again, this is why I like to set origin to center of mass so that it's not some weird place. But yeah, so we can, uh, you don't longer have to uh, start, uh, you know, uh, do the thing in this Bezier curve menu. You can just duplicate them. And then once again, uh, and you don't have to have a circular cross section, though for engines, you pretty much always want to. Uh, you can have any sort of cross section and then you could uh, move these wherever you need them. And that still works. Oh, and if you do want to add a sort of coil run or something, then when you do get around to converting it to a mesh, and then we could go three, uh, alt, select a ring, press E to extrude, scale up, and actually want to scale in on the, uh, the x-axis there. And yeah, uh, and we probably want to edge split on this. So now we have one of those rings. So 
And that's how that's one way of doing it. There's other ways, but that looks fine to me. So that is one of those. Okay, now the gas generator exhaust. Well, there's a lot of things that could be done. It's up to you uh, how you want to go about it. So I'll show you the way of the other way of creating a pipe is actually what I'm going to do. And so we have this end portion. Uh, the gas generator looks to me a very stout sort of thing. I can press E to extrude and make it a little bit smaller. E to extrude, make it a little bit. Uh, we'll probably smooth things out with more polygons later. But it's sort of. Hmm. Trying to get this right. See, th this sort of fiddling thing is what I'm eventually going to do to make the engine. So it's not going to turn out like uh, what I'm going to show in this. I'm going to shade smooth and put that edge split on. And you're going to, well, I'm going to go ahead and press, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, press three, select this face. And now we've got sort of a curvy pipe. It curves outward. So we're going to have it pull out here, but it's going to want to curve and go out and curve. But I'm going to show you the other way to make a pipe, and that is using the spin tool. And to use the spin tool, the first thing we want to do is move that 3D cursor, which is where all the new parts appear. So if you wanted a part to appear over here, let's say I want to add a, well, I could add a cube like that. Uh, no, I want to add a mesh cylinder. They'll appear right there. But what we want to do is to be able to rotate around that point. So I'm going to select, I'm going to press, uh, in order to move it, you press shift, right click, shift, right click, shift, right click. And I'm going to go shift, right click there. I don't think I want to rotate quite there. So I'm going to press N to bring up this menu, which uh, it can, you can use to move things more precisely. And so if I'm an object view, if I click here, I can move the location of this engine. Um, I could type in where I want it and or reset to zero and rescale like this. In general, you want to make sure that your skill ends up being one, especially if you're importing into Kerbal Space Program. So this, for instance, we had rescaled. Now you could type in one, 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 or you can go control A and apply scale and I'll set them all to one. So remember control A and you can apply rotation. So if you've rotated something, but you want it to end up at zero, you know, uh, confirm the rotation and make sure that that's the final rotation. You can just uh, do control A and uh, apply the rotation like that. Uh, scale is the only one that I regularly apply. Rotation can get dicey with animations sometimes. Okay, so we can control the location of the 3D cursor by going into view, and this is the 3D cursor's location. The first thing I want to do is have the Y be zero, so I'm just going to type that in. And I sort of want to move it out a little bit more on the X, so you can actually drag this, but it's not... So you can actually just slide from side to side, but that's not very precise. And then I also want to move it down a little bit. Uh, not that much. So that's going to be like the curve point and you'll see how this works if I select this press tab I've got this face selected spin and I want to spin not not this way around that would see that that doesn't do anything good for us um, I do want to spin this way around so it goes like this and I just pull this one and you can see I didn't put the radius quite where I wanted it right um, I want let uh, I I actually don't want to go 90 degrees, but let's say you want to make a pipe at 90 degrees, okay? And then you can change how many steps it has in it, just in case you want to save some vertices. And now we can still move move it because even if you didn't put the 3D cursor in the right place, you can adjust it. So now you've made a nice 30 uh, 90 degree pipe. So instead of doing the whole deal with oh that's still a little bit far anyway, well that's not the final location anyway, but yeah, instead of doing the whole deal with the Bezier curves and then applying, uh, it, it, it doesn't show up like this. Um, uh, you remember what we did. Go back into the video and see. Okay, you can make a pipe like this and instead of 
yeah, we'd have to tab out six Bezier curve and its geometry bevel. There we go. Okay, so we've got this cylinder and we can press E to extrude and then we can do the whole deal again. Uh, if you keep this here, it's going to end up in the wrong, uh, it's going to look like this, which is not great. But again, we can click that to 90 and then we can use this arrow to slide it out. But now, because we haven't put the 3D cursor well, it's a little bit ickier. And so if it, you may not want it there, right? But that's way number two. But I don't want it like that. To be honest, this, uh, uh, again, I'm going to have to do some shaping on the engine separately. But uh, this basically covers what you need to do to make an engine. Um, and again, if you want the gas generator exhaust to end up uh, being uh, open, open-ended. So I'm actually going to simplify matters. You can just rotate. This is a rotate tool. If you only need to go by a few degrees, And that's what I need. You can sort of rotate like that. And then... And uh, right now it's going by the world geometry. You can click here and change to local. Uh, that did not work very well. So I'm going to go and switch to normal. And then this is the way I want to pull it out. Because I don't want to pull it out with the world geometry. And I could slide it a little bit here. And I could select a ring, press 2, select this ring, and if I wanted to move it down and move it along, and so forth. And then, still working with this, extrude a little bit. Again, this is trying to mimic the engine, which does have this sort of curved pipe. E to extrude, rotate. E to extrude, rotate. And... Uh, e to extrude and an S to size in. E to extrude and an S to size in. But yeah, if we wanted now this uh, gas generator exhaust to have a solid bit, there's another way except for using the solidify. I can press I to inset and then E to just go in. I'm extruding in, so I've sort of made a, see there's a pipe here, and I'm going to put that pipe inside, and I'm not going to put it all the way. So it'll end there, and make sure it's not poking out the mesh. The benefit of this over solidify is it's fewer polygons, right? It's just uh, that ring there, whereas solidify will literally create uh, polygons all over the inside, so it's basically the same number of polygons as you have outside will be created inside so that's a lot more polygons than just I for inset to create the lip and then E to extrude and you can extrude inside to create the interior and as long as you do that properly you're going to get the normals that you need so that that's visible from the inside so I'm trying to think if there's any basic technique that we need that you could use to make an engine but I think the next major thing to talk about is just texturing and uh, the sad truth is uh, I'm not good at it and thankfully I've got Substance Painter to make it easier for me <laughs> so uh, the basics are that this is your texture layer and if you really wanted to just not bother about anything in the world at all. You would select all your parts. So I've done control selecting the actual parts here. I haven't committed the Bezier curves yet. Uh, so uh, just the mesh objects, which are symbolized by these triangles. Actually, this one I did commit apparently. Uh, so we can select that. And if you press tab, you it'll actually let you edit all of them. So here. Uh, before, if we select just one and we press tab, it only show you, shows you the, the faces for that one part. But if you control select them and then press tab, it will show you the faces for all the parts. And so you can edit them all at the same time. And press A. Right now you can see it's unwrapped. The texture is unwrapped in a sort of haphazard way. Uh, you can press U to unwrap the textures 
so that you can eventually paint on them. And there's an unwrap, there's smart UV unwrap, there's a cylinder projection. That doesn't do anything. I, I prefer smart UV project, uh, though, um, yeah, the, 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 there's a complicated sort of story here. Now, you shouldn't, strict, strictly speaking, you want to actually create um, seams so that you can figure out exactly how it's going to unwrap. Basically, what we've got here right now is the nozzle is getting broken up into four different pieces so that if you try to put a texture on it, it's going to end up having four different seams. So instead of letting it do that, what you can do is, and we're going to just select uh, that edge first, and we can go edge uh, mark seam, and tell it that that edge is a seam. I can, uh, since this interior edge, that line there is going to be facing the gas generator exhaust, some of it will be covered up. So it might be the least conspicuous seam if we need a seam there. So I got edge, uh, mark seam. And then of course, uh, this edge will be fine. Edge, mark seam, and so forth. You can manually tell it where the seams might be so that it's not going to create edges in places that are too visible. So that when you make your, your texture, it's not going to be too bad. So let's say I select them all now, press U, Smart UV Project, and let's see what happens. Oh no, it's kept, kept doing the same thing. Uh, U, Unwrap. Well, um, that's a little bit better. You can see it tried to make the nozzle into one piece there. It ended up with a bit of it over here, I think. Or that might be this bit here. Uh, let me see. I think that's 36. That might be the nozzle. Altogether, I think it really unwrapped it, but it's got this these overlapping bits. So UV, average island scale, and then uh, hold on, A to select everything, pack islands. Ah, that's better. Well, the problem is we've got these circle bits that um, I don't think we want separate. Uh, it's taking up too much space. Uh, so the nozzle is the big thing with the chamber, and that's what this is, and all this other stuff are little bits, right? So I select one of the points on the nozzle, press L to select that island. These are all little islands. And we can press S to scale it just like we do in the regular stuff in G. And we could so have it take up more of the space. And you can manually move all these stuff. So I select the point here, press L, G. Uh, I'll move that over there. Just try and make them not overlap. So you can arrange them like that. Uh, but if you look at tutorials for how to do texturing, the the seams and the arrangement of the texture take up a lot of the time. So I just, I'm lazy. Link, oh, you just have to hover over it to select those. So I'll just size that. That seems like it's a tiny little thing. Um, so linked and uh, let's just G to move it, S to size it. For something that you might want to produce multiple textures for, getting the texture file right so that you can easily add other details might be helpful. You can also sort of create a texture map uh, and you can do that by using this texture paint. So you see it sort of made this purple um, and that's that bit there. But if, if you wanted to paint directly on the model, you can, oh, is that happening? Missing materials, textures detected. Oh, we need to uh, go to materials and create a new material. Okay, now we've created a new material. Is it, I haven't done it this way before, so maybe I shouldn't talk about that way. Let me go to base color, image texture, open. So BE7 engine, let's go with the texture file for that. Okay, so this is the texture file for the BE7 engine. And so what I'd do is I'd uh, just get the little components in the part. And this is what I used to do. Now now I've got fancier stuff with Substance Painter, but that's expensive. So this, is, this sort of streaky thing is a metallic texture. Once you've got Textures Unlimited in there, you can make it shine like a metal texture. You might want it darker otherwise. 
Uh, just to, uh, I'll just move some of this stuff over. Mm, so let's get that and we'll see how it looks. And I'll just put all of them in this texture area so that we get a sense of what's going on here. Or we could like leave some in a different area, but it doesn't really matter in this doing it this way, whether it's overlapping unless Again, you're going to want to go in and retexture it a whole lot. So another thing you can do is uh, box select, B to box select. And so I can just select all of these and press G and move them. Oops, I accidentally selected that. Shift and L will unselect that. Alt A will unselect everything. B to box select. G to move. Okay, so now they're all squished in here in a really awkward and never do this way. But let's say you wanted to see what this looks like. Press this one, and you can see it's sort of streaky. The seam is where we thought it would be, right on the inside. And it's not looking very metallic, but there are various things you can do to it that would make it look more metallic. Uh, this is metallic, uh, spectral, reduce roughness. Reducing roughness is usually very important. That's way shiny though. So I could do like that. Okay, and we uh, we probably want it darker and everything, but I have Substance Painter and also even before that I had this extreme PBR library. And so, uh, see it's got a metal there. Um, you can select which type of metal I want. So like that, and I just say that I want to add new, and that adds a new thing here. And now that's what that looks like. Still has the seam in the same place because the seam is determined by how you unwrap the texture in the first place. But you can see that's that metal texture, and maybe we don't want that. And so these are the fancy features that uh, save you a whole heck of a lot of time. <laughs> Uh, if you decide to get serious about this sort of thing. So yeah, that's texturing. Short explanation. There are longer explanations that you can find on YouTube, but uh, yeah, ultimately you're going to find yourself a nice texture from some location and uh, a metallic texture. There are many places with free textures. There's some places with K4 textures, and you can just open up the texture in, you, uh, uh, in fact, uh, instead of using uh, this menu here, what I'm going to do is we're going to go here and, not there, uh, in the material, I'm going to delete this material, oh, oh, edit mode, sorry, uh, remove that material, uh, new material, there we go, uh, and we go here, click here, image texture, and I'll find one of those extreme PBR metallic textures. It said 14. So in my folder, let's say I, let's say I downloaded a texture like that. And I'm going to find it. Sorry, I, yeah, I'm not capturing the file explorer for Blender right now. So, yep, let's say I found some nice metallic texture that I want to use. Uh, let's go with 17. Let's see how it looks. And a lot of these will come with a whole bunch of things. Diffuse, displace, metal, normal, roughness. Um, the ones that you're going to end up using in Blender if you're importing to Kerbal Space Program are going to be diffuse and normal. Um, because uh, Kerbal Space Program only takes those two. And then if you want to add a metallic thing and adjust roughness, you should use Textures Unlimited. And that's a whole other configuration. But anyway, I'm going to open up the diffuse texture and I'm going to select the de diffuse texture that I just imported into here. And it's this sort of copperish texture. And so I've just imported it there. It's not showing up here, but if I click this, well, now it's that, that look. So you just find a texture that you can use and uh, import it in here by just opening the file and you can select a different 
texture. So, and uh, you'll notice that the other parts didn't get the same texture. That's because the material is based on the mesh. And so here, uh, we would select the same material to make that that one. But let's say we wanted uh, one of the ones that we selected before. Well, that's still here too. So that one, and we had also made this one. If the material has a zero by its name, that means nothing is assigned to it. Uh, so that's not great. Another factor is that for a Kerbal Space Program, you can only have one material per mesh. So you can only have one of these for this mesh, but it's okay to have a different one for this mesh. That's okay. As long as these two aren't combined or something, you don't want to do that. So, and then the torus could have a different material and that's okay too. Okay, uh, that doesn't look like a very good engine right now, but I think I covered all the details that I wanted to cover. Oh, uh, if you are importing into a Kerbal Space Program, you'll want a collider um, that should be centered with the engine. So let's put that on zero, zero. And uh, honestly, that's a fine collider. We just want to make sure the top of it is in the same place. And uh, that's about right. And so that will collide with the ground or any kerbals or anything like that. And so in object mode, we will call that collider. And in Unity, you'll have to make sure that that has the collision um, mesh collider module on it. But otherwise, in Unity, you'll turn off the mesh renderer so it won't be visible. Okay, well, anyway, I don't know what else anybody needs to know. So that's basically how to make a <laughs> rocket engine. Really, um, again, I, I, I don't know what else to cover uh, off the top of my head. So I'll leave it at that. It's already a really long video. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.